So why would anyone spend $739 on a luxury dress sneaker? Well, this is Nick at stridewise.com and I flew from New York City here to the shoemaking capital of England, Northampton, to find out why Crown Northampton considers this the world's best sneaker. And I gotta tell you, once you find out about all the materials and craftsmanship that go into it, you might be convinced that 739 bucks is a pretty reasonable price. First of all, we start with the last, and that's the mold of someone's foot. Um, that we adapt, and we, we probably have 10, I think we had 11 different alterations of that one last to get a fit that we felt was suitable for the markets we want to sell in. It also needs to fit the sole unit, which we're buying as a natural gum. Luckily, natural gum is quite flexible, so it can adapt to suit a slight adjustment in the last. Um, the other thing that we do is, is lots of different size fittings. So we need a last that if you get a standard fitting, it's standard and a G fitting slightly wider, is slightly wider or narrower and we can adapt to suit. That's stage one. Stage two is design something on that last and that's the pattern cutting. And that's very much down to my personal taste from a manufacturing background. So stuff in these shoes is designed um, knowing how a machinist will machine it, knowing how a stitch will be put together. So you can design something, but there's very, it's very technical how something's put together. Um, like I showed in the, when we were making the shoe or cutting the leather, some of the patterns designed are quite unusual, quite big, which is not normal for pattern cutting, but I do it in order to make the shoe as clean, as simple as possible, to highlight the materials, because that's the cost in the shoe, the materials and putting it together. So pattern cutting is the next stage. Then you go to clicking, which is the clicking room, and this is the same as any, whether you're hand cutting it or whether you're using a machine like I showed you downstairs. Clicking is the next phase, and that's laying out the leathers, whether it be the buffalo or this thing here's crocodile or whatever it is you're using, is getting cutting it the right way, and that kind of comes from experience. What we're starting with is Shell Cordovan from Hawing Leather Company, broadly considered the greatest tannery in the United States. So basically, yeah, Hawing is the the best tannery in the world, the best tannery for making cordovans. Very, very cool leather, very difficult to work with, but the way I cut cordovan. First of all, is know what size you're cutting. So for example, this is a size nine. You can fit in here. So as you can see, that one, that's in a shoe. So the, the, the justification of the price of something is always for us down to the material and the time it takes to cut that material. This is a really nice veg tan line. And the, the, like the only other people that use this leather that I know of are like uh, really high-end bag makers use, use this leather in their handles, like the French brands. Then it's closing, prep and closing, which is the skiving that I showed you, then closing is the machining. Oak bark tanned leather is an important part of, of what makes this shoe uh, expensive and also worth the price. Yeah. And uh, what, what, so tell me what goes into that. Like what parts of the shoe are oak bark tanned leather and what are its properties? Why is it so special? So, okay, with the quarter, well, with all the hand stitch sneakers, we use oak bark tanned leather and it takes about a year and a half for it to be tanned. English calf. Different parts of the leather are used for different parts of the shoe. So. This will be the belly of the, the animal, and it's used because it's got a, a less dense 
properties, yeah. which we use, and we soak it and wet it, and it molds the shape of the shoe, and it creates a really firm finish when it's dry. Mm -hmm. It's really unusual. It also, it isn't plastic, which is quite good for the environment, but it would, it should last forever. Then it's lasting and making, which is pull toe lasting, side lasting, roughing the shoe, sole laying the shoe. then it's the finishing room, finishing and um, boxing room. I only started in 1908 making bespoke shoes in London and did that for two generations. Then my father moved it to Northampton, which is where shoes are being mass produced and had been since the Second World War um, in the 70s, when department stores used to buy from manufacturers in the UK. In fact, most of Northampton, probably 80% of Northampton, were employed making shoes for department stores in the UK and eventually for the rest of the world. Late 80s, those department stores decided to buy from places like China and India. And that's kind of where my story begins. So my earliest memories have been in my father's factories and kind of seeing the moccasins he used to make, hand-stitched moccasins, and walking around the factory and kind of hearing all those noises and those smells. It's just like industrial, it was really cool. And then it all going and everything disappearing. Then my story picks, in, picks up from um, leaving school and wanting to be involved in the industry because I was in it since I was like four, like screwing studs into like football boots and things like that when my dad used to make those little, little things like that. and that's all I knew and that's kind of I wanted to be part of it but I wanted to have more control. So um, I learned design and pattern cutting um, in the colleges that were still going here that are now shut unfortunately and then eventually was confident enough to create my own stuff so I designed a range called Crown um, and that was kind of like the first phase of our growth is having a brand of your own, having the control of that brand and then and then reaching markets that really appreciate English made, which is, love, which is a wonderful thing to feel, to be honest. And I wanted to create something that was, although expensive, a fair price. If you were shopping online, because it happened, this is maybe six or seven years ago, online is kind of picking up and it's falling in line with me being quite good at designing and knowing what my style is, like really minimalist designs, and knowing how I want to get to market. It's gonna be slow, I'm not borrowing money, I'm not, I don't have to pay back investors and I want to create something that is like grown by the staff and is worth making and has real value. So I, I created Crown Northampton, which is something that we sell online. Um, and this is kind of where the, 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 the business, my family kind of goes back to where it once was. My great granddad used to make bespoke shoes for people in his local area. And I now make made to order shoes for people online, sort of similar sort of numbers as I imagine my great granddad did, but instead of for people in the local area, it's people all over the world that can appreciate something handmade. My priority um, is, is, to, is to create jobs. So I'm trying to pay people by selling online. I'm hopefully paying my staff better. I'm hopefully giving them multi-skilled jobs where they're no longer just working in a factory where they have a career. 
all my staff are from Northampton. I don't know where I'd find them if I wasn't here because they've been in the industry, like most of their parents were making shoes and their parents were making shoes. I observed a while ago that in order for people to, especially young people, to leave school to go into a manufacturing job, I need to adjust the mentality of what a factory job is. And to do that, I need to upskill people and make them the worth. We've been making bespoke stuff for, pe for, for stores in London for years. And um, the stores in London, don't get me wrong, they need to make money, their shops cost a lot. But the, the skill, the thing that makes them those shoes amazing are the people making it. So they're the people I'm trying to put front and centre, which is why it's led to an academy where I can train more people and the people that are skilled can train more people and we can just grow a business making the best stuff we can possibly make. The sneakers are worth it because you can't buy better at the price point we make them for. I've designed them from knowledge. So what's the best leather I can buy for an upper? What's the best leather lining I can buy? What's the best sole I can buy? What's the best way of putting those things together? And what's the best way of making them cost effective for someone to buy? So I don't do any wholesale is the first thing. Everything that we're selling is made to order. It adds on, it adds on time for people to buy it, but I, I like to think the people that are investing our time in making for them understand that they're getting something quite unique, genuinely designed to be the best they can be. I didn't intentionally make a dress sneaker, so I design stuff that I like. I don't really, I don't really make stuff to fit a category. I make stuff, people then see it and go, oh, that's kind of in between a dress shoe and a sneaker. And then I was like, yeah, I suppose it is. I'm using the same materials as a dress shoe, but I'm making a sneaker. I've just designed stuff that, that I like and that my staff like, that's unique, that's quite difficult to make. If it's hard to make and you need skill to make it, that kind of helps with what I do because I want it to be difficult and challenging. It makes it much harder to copy. If you're going to make something bespoke, you start by going, let's make something that fits really well, let's make something that fits me really well, and then let's make it special by using the best materials. And that's what's kind of led on to what I do. I, so I've got the best materials that fit really well, and that's all, I, all it is to me. So it's, why it's the best dress sneak or why that category exists is not really down to me, that's down to other people saying that's kind of where it fits. And also the fact that people come in here getting married, buy shoes to match their suit to get, to get married in, which kind of makes it a dress sneaker.